What's up everyone and welcome to another Warframe video. Well, I'm back again. I will have a video coming soon talking about my plans for the channel, games I'm going to be wanting to cover in the future, and an expansion to where you can find my content, and that will all be coming in the near future. But for now, you're all here for one reason, that is Komai and the Five Fates has just released for Warframe, and with it has come a load of changes, new frames, new weapons, and a couple of frame reworks. The focus of today's video, as you already know from the video title, is going to be Nova, her changes and how it has changed her. Well, she got a pretty extensive rework, and while I'm not going to be going into the entirety of the changes, they can be found in the patch notes linked in the description, I am going to pick out the highlights. First big change, the passive. Killing slowed enemies has a chance to drop health orbs, sped up enemies have a chance to drop energy orbs wonderful for playing around with equilibrium builds spoiler alert we do null star is finally recastable hallelujah this has been a long awaited change and has meant that we can free up a mod slot where we were using to be able to keep the damage reduction up from null star and keep that as high as possible alongside this the base particles were also increased this means we don't need to focus as heavily into ability, uh, into ability duration to be able to get her max damage reduction. The amount of damage reduction per particle is also increasable with power strength. So not only do we need less duration to max out damage reduction, being able to affect that with strength also means we can reduce that duration focus. The very TLDR of this change is that losing a single particle without max duration before this change was a very big deal and could lead to your damage reduction fluctuating around the top end. But the ability to mod into both strength and duration to boost it gives us infinitely more leeway to keep that damage reduction at 90% constantly. Antimatter drop got the ability to speed it up by tapping the ability button. It got a damage type change to blast and a change which only allows 5 shots to be absorbed by it, not including any multi shot. This really favours high damage, single shot, non crit weapons to charge best meaning that optimizing around this can be a little bit difficult. The biggest change though for antimatter drop, line of sight. Now, I'll be honest, I do need to do more testing actually in game. The simulacrum doesn't simulate the line of sight very well. I mean, it's a very open space, so naturally it looks amazing there and you're gonna see lots of clips of them, people wiping out massive groups of enemies in the simulacrum. But in actual gameplay, that might be less usable. Not to mention that any game mode that forces you into certain weapons can really mess up with your ability to charge that ability up fully. Now Wormhole, that got barely any changes. The Wormhole stays up indefinitely until all charges are used or replaced. Um, it's not going to change its use case very much, which is mostly speedrunning or sprinting to extraction. But honestly, still nice quality of life change. The biggest change though, Molecular Prime, the days of modding for negative strength is gone. You can now tap cast for slow and hold cast for speed. Gone are the days of forgetting what Nova you're on and disappointing your teammates by slowing down the defense mission. Not only that, but also just as huge of a change, the speed now works on enemies with crowd control uh, immunity and the ability no longer just applies the damage bonus to health. It applies to all enemy defenses now, which honestly is pretty nuts. Now those are what I find to be the biggest changes for her, but amusingly, it doesn't really change the build for her a whole lot. We're gonna go with Umbral Intensify, Umbral Vitality for power, strength and health, Adaptation for damage reduction, Blind Rage for more strength, Narrow Minded for duration. We're also going to go with Equilibrium, which is going to give us health and energy based on the orb that we pick up. The Arcanes we're going to go with are Blessing, that's going to give us more health from those health orbs, generated either through our passive or through our pet. And then we're going to have Guardian for more armor. And then the Archon Shards are four blue armor shards and one Tau Green for the additional stack of Corrosive Procs. Our Handwidth ability is going to be Nourish in place of Antimatter Drop to give us more energy, which is going to work with a mod that we're going to talk about later on, Energy Nexus, and also for Viral Procs on Demand. Now the two mods I haven't talked about so far, honestly, are 
ones you could probably do different things with. Molecular Fission is a super comfortable mod and means you can keep your damage reduction up at all times by using your M Prime, something you're going to be doing anyway. I like it for a kind of brain off gameplay, but since you can recast Null Star now, you can get away with not needing this augment. It is purely quality of life at this point, but for me, it's really, really, really good quality of life. Energy Nexus is also potentially uh, replaceable, but since we play into its strengths by slapping Nourish onto the frame as well, mostly for that energy generation and a bit for the, start, the viral status procs, it is super nice for the brain off ability spam, especially with the amount of things that like to steal your energy. Replacing either of those two, I would go with either a Prime Flow for, well, for tons of energy, or the third Umbral for more survivability. Personally, I would favour her Primed Flow for more that more brain off ability spam, but if you want to super tank her, something I feel is a little bit overkill, but then the third Umbral is the way to go there. So what do I think of the rework to her? Well, honestly, she feels pretty much the exact same to play for the most part as she did before. You cast one, you cast two, and you cast four. And then you keep casting four for the rest of the mission. So on a really basic level, the build's not changed much, and neither has the gameplay. So why was she the first frame I wanted to do for my first video back? Well, she's an absolutely perfect base to do literally anything in the game now. Farming low level defense, speed her. Farming something high level with a failure condition, slow her. And you don't have to worry about switching your build anymore. It's the same build for both. There is an argument to be made that the negative strength build was one of the most interesting builds for her, because, well, let's be honest, how often do you build for negative power strength? But the quality of life improvements to her makes her so much easier to play, and she absolutely bosses literally anything you bring her into. Nova's always been a fan favourite, and I'm sure there are going to be other builds other than this. Well, I mean, there's no other way to put it, this is a brick build. But she is always one of my go-to frames for harder content. She's always been massively, uh, massively tanky, but now it's so much more consistent, and there's no weird fluctuation in that damage reduction. You can feel comfortable that that damage reduction is always going to be there. And then the double damage from your weapons, no matter what they are, they affect more than just health now, that's an incredibly understated change. And since Warframe is all about going fast, being able to speed up the annoying CC immune enemies is such a lifesaver. She is honestly an absolutely perfect frame, a balance between power and survivability, and one that I will continue using heavily. So I hope you enjoyed my first video back, there will be more coming and the Five Fates videos coming soon, let me know what you're most excited for in this update in the comments below. But for now, many thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I shall see you in the next video.